imagine this. Imagine you're in high school and you're not really sure what you want to do with your life, what kind of job you want to have. And not only that, but your grades are so bad that pretty much every summer you have to go to summer school just to get that passing grade. That was me in high school. And not only were my grades bad, I couldn't focus. I was terrible in school. I didn't know what it is that I wanted to do, so I didn't care. But I felt like I had to figure it out. I went on this soul-searching journey trying to figure out what it is that I wanted to do after school. And pretty much everybody around me was saying, oh, well, go to college. Go to college and get a degree, and then with that, it'll be easier to find yourself a job. So I decided to study communications. (laughs) With my really shitty grades, uh, my very confused state of mind of what I wanted to do, I decided to study communications, of course. As I was going through university, I saw all of my peers and they knew what it is that they wanted to do. They were so certain about it, whether it's being in the creative field or marketing, social media, stuff like that. I'd never really cared for that. I convinced myself that my dream job was to work in the film industry. So I worked hard. I got my grades back up. I worked very hard and this was during COVID. So I was basically busting my ass from the ages of 18 to 24 to try to get my dream job, my dream nine to five job. And then when I graduated, I saw my peers around me getting those respective jobs and I felt like absolute shit about myself. I beat myself up over it. I... (laughs) I remember I couldn't even, I was on vacation, I couldn't even focus on spending time with my family because I was so overwhelmed with, with, with the jealousy at the people around me that were successful and in their respective fields and I was just sitting around not doing anything. And people around me were pressuring me to go into jobs that I didn't like and this and this, so, and eventually... I got a call for a job and the job was to be a PA at a virtual effects company. And when I tell you that once I started working, working this job that I had built up in my mind that I always wanted, I became so severely depressed. And listen, I know I'm not the only one you see thousands and thousands of people on YouTube, on social media, saying that they've quit their corporate jobs, that they're, they don't want to work their nine to fives anymore. And I get it. I do. Because we're indoctrinated with this idea of a dream job. It's weird how we glamorize this, this labor. But why is it? that we do the labor that we do, why is it that we have dream jobs? And why is it that some people are born with knowing what it is that they want to do? And some of us don't know what they're doing, but they just try things. I had to do a lot of soul searching because during my that nine to five job, actually it was nine to six, because if any of you know what it's like to be production work, it takes, it is a lot. I was sitting on my ass on my computer pretty much all day and then not only that I would sit on my computer afterwards as well I would not move for the entire day and so I became so severely depressed and my body was painfully like treading every single day and it's funny because I thought to myself this is my dream job why is it that I feel this way I've built up this idea this fantasy for years throughout my school experience my university experience i've built up this this expectation this fantasy i guess of this job being able to fix me fix my uncertainty fix my my self-worth and it made it so worse it made it worse And after that, eventually I I ended up quitting because my body just wouldn't take it anymore. 
I was so if it literally felt like like I was Sisyphus literally just pushing up a boulder but the boulder was like on my chest basically and I was like pushing it with my chest that's how it kind of felt like every day it felt so treacherous and you have to imagine Sisyphus happy but oh man was I was not that was not worth it whatsoever and so I quit and after I quit I did some soul searching as to why is it that I felt that way why is it that I put so much of myself into this fantasy of a dream job and I had to recollect my thoughts and here are some things that I learned I was really I didn't have time to really explore what it is that I wanted to do I was kind of thrusted with the pressures of going to school it was either going to school or working in the or being in the workforce basically working customer service jobs my whole life with very little pay and I didn't want that for myself I I don't know so I decided to go to university and when I was in university I didn't want to waste my time in university so I had to figure out a job to do afterwards and I attached myself to the idea of working in the film industry solely because I wanted to be part of something do something be known for something and I think that this is where I made the mistake it was coming from a place of of ego I wanted people to know me I wanted people to say whoa Alex did this that's so cool rather than doing something that truly brings me authentic joy authentic purpose and so when I began working that nine to five it dawned on me that it wasn't worth it what I was doing what I was working at it's such a terrible feeling to be stuck in a place be imprisoned in a place that makes you miserable solely because your ego wants it to I know many people in many jobs that are sacrificing their sanity for the sake of money or ego and I don't blame them because that's this is how society functions this is how we pressure children to figure out their dream jobs what it is that they want to do afterwards when I left that nine to five I had a sort of reawakening thought about what it is that I wanted to do with my life now and this was about two years ago and I thought about not necessarily what job I wanted to do but what type of impact I wanted to make in the world and like I said before I realized that my mistake was that I wanted to be part of something so I can have my name in the credits I could be like ah yes Alex is somebody and it's absurd to think back on that because I had to realize that my sense of self-worth was solely directed by what other people thought of me not what I thought of me not what I found satisfying not what made me happy but I still felt a lot of shame because it took me a lot a long time and it's still taking me a long time to figure it out because I don't want to do something for the sake of people looking at me and saying how Alex is so successful and I don't want to do something that makes me so much money to the point where I sacrifice my happiness and my mental health when I quit that nine-to-five job I had a particular person in my life who questioned me 
They said, what do you mean you you left? How could you leave? It was such a good job. I don't get it. Your people are so indoctrinated with the with this idea that they have to self-sacrifice in order to be happy, but that's a trap. It's such a trap. And I don't know, maybe I'm more sensitive, maybe I'm more attuned, maybe I'm more stupid. I don't know. But I couldn't do it. So then I spent about approximately a couple of months trying to figure out what's my next step, what it is that I wanted to do. And for a long time, I always wanted to do YouTube. But that's pretty unoriginal because I know so many people on YouTube uh, do this thing where they ah, they quit their tech jobs or they quit their this job to do YouTube full time. Blah, blah, blah. Something that I realized that would fulfill me a lot deeper is helping people. Maybe not helping, but just being there for people. Providing something to the world. From my true, authentic, inner self, my, my personhood. Through either making videos where I'm pouring my heart out and my vulnerabilities out to where I work now, which I work in a library where every day I help kids find the books that they're looking for, where I have fun with all of my coworkers, where I go shelve books and I talk to people about books, where I'm the hub where people can ask for help. I think at the end of the day, what gives me the most sense of self-worth is community. I don't care much about money, about... I mean, I like material things. I mean, who doesn't? There are certain things that we all like. I like finer things sometimes. But at the end of the day, it's not worth it to sacrifice my sense of self, my humanity, my need for authenticity, my need for community and connection just to fulfill the expectations of other people just to fulfill the expectations that other people have on me and i don't care if people look at me like i'm a bum like i'm useless like i'm worthless at the end of the day i would rather just do what's what makes me the happiest And if for you, that's your 9-to-5 job, that's amazing. There are so many things that a 9-to-5 job can offer, like stability, benefits. And I totally understand that. But for me, I don't know. I guess for me to do that, it needs I need to be doing something a little bit. It needs to be for a bigger purpose. Something that's outside of my ego. Or my need to be seen. And that is more so. For providing joy. Relief. Understanding. Kindness. Because those are things. That matter. Those are things that fulfill the soul. I think that that's what helped me creep out of my depression. This isolation that I had when I was in my 9-to-5 job was ruthless. And now that I'm working with people constantly, sometimes, yeah, sometimes I get so sick of people, but there's nothing quite like it. And hey, maybe one day I get to work for myself. I don't know. But all I know is that if I do, whatever anything happens, I want it to be because of a deeper, more authentic, more true purpose, rather than one that is based through ego.
And I think that is just the journey of life. We go through ups and downs. We learn things. We get hit with realizations that you need to go through that everybody goes through. And I know I'm not the only one. Anyway, um, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day. Bye. <laughs>